this is actually the main reason I I competed in the in the half Ironman. No, this is my medal and my finishes t-shirt, my mug. I also got an iced coffee cup. I ran in this. Uh, what else? I got a backpack. You get a backpack given to you. Well, given to you as part of your entry fee. Um, what else? I got another cup and a water bottle. I got a key ring. <laughs> I got a swim hat. Can you tell I did a half Ironman? So I thought I would just put a video together just talking through my experience of the Ironman 70.3 in Mallorca that I raced yesterday. It was, yeah, the best experience. And I'm gonna talk through my numbers now. So overall time was five hours, 43 and 14 seconds. So in my head, I had that I wanted to get sub six hours. And I, I kind of knew I could do that. Um, and in my sort of second goal was sub 5.45. So I got 5.43. So I was yeah, really happy with that. 22nd out of 73 for my age group, 84th out of 428 for my gender, and 914th out of 2,600. Top half overall, top 20% for my gender and my age group. So chuffed with, with both of those. I think in my age group I came like fourth British female as well. <laughs> my swim time I came fourth in, in my age group, which was yeah, which was just incredible. 2937. Transition time was six minutes, but it was a kilometer that you had to run, and then obviously me faffing around pouring water on myself and just taking my time drying my feet. And then I managed three hours fifteen on the bike. Average pace was twenty-eight point eight kilometers per hour. Again, I was chuffed with, uh, ideally I'd wanted like that to hit that 30 kilometers per hour, which I would have done if it was a flat route, but obviously with the climb, that just, yeah, that just slows you right down. My second transition time was though eight minutes and seven seconds. That's quite a long transition time, but you gotta go to the toilet, don't you? My run time overall was one hour 44. Ideally I wanted to get one out, sub one hour 40, but you know, I'll take sort of four minutes off that. That's yeah, I'll, I'll take it. You can see my pace drop. I was sort of getting one, a 4.36 pace, 4.46. And then just towards the end, it was sort of like 5.20. I pushed on for the last kilometer because I got a 4.06 average. So start of the day up super, super early, sort of around um, five o'clock, I think. I got to transition sort of around quarter past six to just check over my bike. I pumped up my tires. I put my nutrition on my bike, all my hydration and everything, and just checked that was all in place checked then my transition bags were hung up and in place and obviously had that had all of like my bike gear my running gear so for when I came out of the swim to, to get changed they were all in place so I just had a final check through of everything then we headed down to the swim start we did a bit of a warm-up in the sea I just got a bit acclimatized to the water and just got sort of yeah used to it really well there was a half Ironman and an Ironman run on the on the same day yesterday so I think there was just over 4,000 people there so it was a busy busy swim start I mean I was so nervous I think when I got to the start line I felt like overwhelmed with like music playing and I felt like I wanted to cry it was just it was a really overwhelming feeling it just it was it was strange being there obviously I've been training for this for well since September it's been a long process of training and getting ready for this race so it was it just felt a bit overwhelming at the start there was a man next to me crying it was all very overwhelming they have different pens for your predicted swim time so you know 20 minutes 30 minutes I put myself in the 30 minute one because I thought I would do around a 32 minute swim for the 1.9k swim so I put myself there they then sort of feed you into onto the starting line where you then line up and I think there's about five or six different lines you can go into to, and then every I think it was every four or five seconds they let a row of like five or six people go through so it wasn't they used to do mass starts where everyone would just be in the sea and they'd blow a horn and everyone would just start swimming and everyone would be climbing over each other I don't think they were that safe so I think that's why they've they've changed it so the start was a lot calmer than I thought it was going to be started my watch trotting my way into the sea and yeah just it was actually more spacious than I thought so I was able to sort of find my own little path and just just start swimming really you get into your stroke and just allow your heart rate to steadily rise because obviously you're super hyped up anyway and the adrenaline's pumping and your heart rate's high anyway obviously if you you then set off really quickly you're yeah, you're gonna get out of breath really easy it's gonna feel you're sort of gonna feel more panicked your heart rate's gonna be sort of too high and it would just 
yeah, it'd be stressful. The swim was fine, and occasionally, you'd, I don't know, you'd be swimming next to someone and you both feel like you're swimming in a straight line, and then someone would just come in from the side thinking they were swimming in a straight line, and because you're not obviously in a pool, everyone thinks they're swimming in a straight line, and you always end up running into someone, and I had one person push my legs down and climb over the other side of me, and to be fair, I did that to someone else because I thought they were veering that way and I wanted to go that way, so it's all very, it's a bit stressful, but once you're out of that first, like, initial bit you do sort of find your space and it's fine and actually I really surprised myself on the swim I felt really confident I was overtaking people and I managed a 29 29 30 I think on the 29.37, I'm gonna take it. I was really happy. I didn't expect for it to go that well. So a really strong start. I didn't just get out and start sprinting because you do feel, it's almost like a bit of seasickness or you just felt a bit, a bit dizzy. It's just a strange sensation going from swimming to getting out of the sea and running up this red carpet. And there was people either side of, of this red carpet cheering you. It was an amazing atmosphere. So ran into transition, got my bike bag, took my wetsuit off and made sure to have a wee in the sea <laughs> before I, yeah, before I got out because then obviously you've got like a three or so hour bike ride ahead of you and I didn't want a wee on the bike. <laughs> put my helmet on, put all my bike gear on, had a gel then as well and that's obviously where the bike started. For me, anything over like 30 kilometres an hour, if I'm hitting like 32 kilometres an hour, 35, I'm chuffed with that. But all of these men were just flying past me and all they in you know in their proper gear with their streamlined helmets and they're in their aero position and I'm just sort of sat up right on a the bike they were all just flying past me obviously they maybe weren't as strong as me on the swim but they're much stronger than me on the bike and it was hard to not well I tried to make sure I didn't get carried away with them because obviously they were going at you know 45 50 kilometers an hour and if I'd have pushed myself to go that fast so early on I would have burnt out sort of halfway and there's a big climb in the Mallorca half Ironman so 20 kilometers flat and then it's about 15 kilometers of climbing so i needed to save my energy especially for that and obviously the the 90k ahead so i just got into my my rhythm let all these people pass just didn't get phased um by that and just let them zoom past me and every so often when they would zoom past me i sort of hang on to the back of them a little bit and they'd sort of take me along and i spoke to um, my mom and my coach um about this before but just like taking it all in and just like not yeah, not going off too hard and not um, getting too stressed and just taking the whole environment in, um, you know, taking in the views. It was a beautiful bike route on the New York Half Ironman, so just took in the views and just, yeah, enjoyed it as much as possible. By the time I got to the climb, I'd, I'd smashed the first 20K. I, I think I did the first 20K in, like, 35 minutes or something like that it was like i was really impressed with with how fast i'd done that got to the climb and as i said it's just 15 kilometers pretty much of climbing so your speed obviously drops but for me because in comparison to the men that were doing it i'm a lot lighter uh, and women tend to do better apart from obviously the elites but women tend to you know be faster on the, on the climbs because we're lighter maybe sort of more power per kilo um, of, of body weight so you know some of these bigger men who'd flown past me on the flats and on the downhills I was sort of going past them on the way up so that felt quite nice um I have done the bike route before so I kind of knew what was what I was expecting I don't know if that was better or worse I think I yeah I think it was good to know to know what to expect to know when there was a few downhills or sort of undulating bits it's like a huge relief when I got to the top just knowing that there was like a nice 10k of downhill and sort of the rest pretty much is a nice flat route so again just taking it all in and just having a nice time really i think i had about three or four gels on the bike and i also fueled my bike with saurine that's what i've been practicing with malt loaf saurine you do need something savory i think having all those sweet gels it just gets too much and the thought of what a gel right now makes me feel sick i wasn't nervous about the race as a whole the thing i was most nervous about was getting a puncher on the bike you, you don't want to be wasting time you just want to have a seamless race which I did I saw a few people getting punctured and I, I felt sad for them but I was just sort of thinking I'm glad that's not me yeah, and the bike route was actually 92k and I was a bit gutted by that I got hit 90 expecting transition to be there and it wasn't and it was about an extra two and a half k to get to the end anyway I ran into transition and me and my boyfriend had spent so long saying like this is what you need to look out for there's a yellow building there there's an Orosky there 
that's where your bike is positioned and it's good to know where your bike's positioned because as I said like 4,000 bikes all in line they all look the same got into transition ran straight past where my bike was supposed to be racked had to turn around and run back and those people coming towards me and I think they thought I was like going back out on the bike it was all yeah it was all a bit um, of a panic changed into my running gear I did change my socks I've got dry, dry socks on and I after the swim and after the bike I put a whole like half litre bottle of water like over my face just over me to keep me cool and to get like this the, like the salt and stuff off what I did as well which I was proud of myself of was put a load of tissues into my run transition bag so when I got all my run gear on ran to one of the portaloos which I assumed wouldn't have had any toilet roll in which they didn't so I had my tissues ready to go to the toilet that's a, definitely a tip first 5k I was feeling great I was flying I sort of was hitting around four 432 to 440 pace which was like my desired that's what I wanted to hit that's what I've been training and been feeling good running and was doing that fine for the first 5k and then I just then it was kind of like 445 450 455 459 and then I sort of hit that five minute mark and by sort of like 12 kilometers knowing because it's a three lap course so once I did the first loop I think it was like a mental block once I hit that sort of seven or eight K, a mental block knowing I had two more laps to do and that was a bit like soul destroying. But I plodded on, I kept saying to myself, as long as you just don't stop running, but just keep plodding on, that's that's all I need to do. I try kind of like avoid like avoided looking at my watch and tr ignored the pace and just just tried to keep running. I think what happened though was I just had too many gels. I think I had another gel at seven K, so I think overall I had five gels in total from the beginning of the bike through to sort of first 7k of the run and my stomach was just in bits like I had a tummy ache I felt really queasy as well and that was the worst bit I felt queasy so I was debating stopping at one of the portaloos but I just yeah I just kept plodding on basically I managed to actually find a guy and we just were running next to each other for like a kilometer or two and we were on the same lap so I sort of asked him oh, have you got have you got one more lap left and he said yes I was like right I'm gonna stick with you and we just sort of found a nice pace and then we started to build that pace up towards the end but that kind of kept me motivated knowing I had to stay with him potentially I could have run a bit faster than him I don't know but we just found a nice pace we were running together it felt like we were like helping each other so it was just nice the main thing though was that the sun was it was hot it was really hot and that's what my coach had also warned me about what a normal pace like for you would feel like and make it feel so much harder so you could be running at a five minute pace but could feel like the effort that you would be like exerting at a 430 pace for next time as I said before I'd take more savory food rather than just relying on gels because my stomach was as I said was in bits and it just wasn't comfortable the running course every single water station I went past I got a cup of water poured it over myself I then started grabbing a cup of water and a cup of coke and had a sip of coke and then poured the water over myself I couldn't stomach any more gels or anything so yeah th I mean the atmosphere on the run was amazing everyone was sort of like just pushing each other the crowds were amazing it was just an incredible atmosphere and, I, that's, and that was the main thing I was just trying to soak that all up as well and that's what I kept reminding myself of enjoy it don't like sort of get too much in your head just look around take in the the atmosphere and, and that's what I did obviously came down the finishing finishing carpet through the finishing archway and that was yeah just an incredible experience and across the finish line and I had this like overwhelming feeling and I started to cry but then I think you know when you get like a, a knot like in your chest like your chest feels really tight when you like want to cry and I was trying to sort of stop myself from crying but then because I was so out of breath from obviously the five and a half hours of exercise I'd just done I couldn't I couldn't take in a deep breath and then I started to panic and then I spoke to someone I was like I can't like I feel like I can't breathe so then this Bloody, like Red Cross lady came and like sat me in a wheelchair and wheeled me off but I was like I'm fine I just I think I was just overwhelmed I probably just needed to like see my mum and my boyfriend and have a cry but um, they whisked me off to a medical tent and tested my oxygen levels and said my heart rate was high and I was like well obviously like I've just I've just done five and a half hours of exercise but anyway that was fine I had a trip to the, the medical tent which was funny got my medal got my finishing t-shirt ultimately it was just about completing it and 
setting a goal that was yeah was terrifying was hard work it's you know I've been training some weeks you know 15 16 hours I've been giving up weekends to do sort of three hour rides followed by two hour runs it's been it's been full on it's been hectic and it'll be weird not having a goal it'd be good to just have a bit of downtime I'll still I'll still train and I'll still do stuff but I won't obviously it's not such a big goal currently still got my wristband on maybe I'll keep that on for a couple more days other than that I think what I've learned from this race is <laughs> try practicing in the heat and maybe practicing transition more so I don't I don't faff around in transition quite as much for someone who's never done a half Ironman before I'll, t I'll take it I hope you enjoyed my uh, little race recap there and um, yeah thanks for watching <laughs>